Good afternoon, guys uh, and girls. Uh, Rob Luck here, Golf Academy Director, Three Hammers Golf Complex, Golf Academy. Today, I'm with uh, one of my long-time pupils and uh, trainee, soon-to-be training professional here, Will Dunn, uh, is with me at the Academy. And today, we're gonna be focusing on short game. Um, reason being, just of late, uh, myself and the rest of the guys so many of our clients uh, coming to us uh, having ventured out the weekends on very soggy uh, golf courses and they've been really struggling with their uh, their wedge play. Now, I know that um, Ian Seath and Carl Cooper delivered a fantastic uh, short game session um, about a month or so ago now, uh, which I thought was great with the live. So I thought what we're gonna do today, we're actually gonna just go through an actual live lesson with Will. Uh, we're gonna watch Will and see how he's striking it with his wedges. Um, and then we're just, we're just going to go, just going to go through a, a few, a number of examples uh, to see what we see with a number of our clients, and of course try and help Will with his golf game. So, Will, if you can give me just a little bit of feedback on yourself, bit of a yeah. uh, bit of a skinny. So, you, uh, so tell me. So, how old are you now? Uh, 18. So, 19 March next year. So, we're now in February now. Okay, fantastic. And you are looking to embark on the PGA journey uh, next year? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so next September I'm looking to either start the IGMS program or either start the PGA Foundation degree here. Yeah. Great, so the AGMS, that's the, uh, that's the actual main degree out of Birmingham University, which our very own Carl Cooper has recently, yeah. uh, recently graduated from. So, great. Uh, what do you play off, Will? Fan of five, isn't it? So 4.7 uh, at the moment. 4.7. And I think it's safe to say that your long game has been pretty short and yeah. it's maybe the scoring game here which yeah. has let you down just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what we're going to do, uh, the, the range here is, uh, it, it's been uh, just, just been prepared for us. It's uh, been closely mown. So we've got a decent surface here. We're going to watch Will just clip a few wedges away just towards the yellow disc in front of us and we're going to see how Will's striking it. We're going to see if we can uh, see if we can improve Will's technique, especially for this time of year. So if you can yeah. hit some wedges, Will, yeah, just to that yellow disc, which from where we're standing here is approximately 40 yards away. Yeah. So that's that really awkward distance which we've, uh, we're struggling with at the moment. Well, certainly lots of uh, my clients are struggling with at the moment. So what we've done here with Will, we've actually just, uh, here's one we made earlier, we've just put some spray down on the, uh, on the turf here to monitor exactly where Will is striking the golf ball. So decent contact there, a little bit short of target. We'll go again. And we're going to have a close look at these divot patterns in a moment because you can really learn so much from these, uh, these divot patterns. Lovely, lovely, lovely. What club's that you got there, Will? That much, 54 degree. 54 degree. So we're going to touch on this a little bit more in a moment, but I'm guessing the reasons why you pick the sand wedge is because of the sole. Yeah. Yeah? Bounce. Yeah, so say that again, you said? A lot more bounce on the sand wedge. More bounce. So this time of year, if we hit down on the golf ball and it's soft and soggy, the ch chances are it's going to dig in too much. Now, with your sand down, a little bit more bounce here, when it bottoms out, we kind of get that skid and he gets us out of jail with a bad one. Okay, let's go one more for me. Well, two great shots there, with great divots anyway, which we're gonna learn a lot from, as I said. Okay, got it there, dialed in. Dialed in your distances. So, if our cameraman would just kindly could just move around this side, we're gonna have a close look at your, uh, your divots. Now, what we can see here with Will, if I just put the, uh, the golf ball down. So Will there, as we can see, that divot itself, the divot pattern, is coming after the golf ball. This is exactly what we're looking for with our wedge play. However, we don't want that divot getting too deep after the golf ball. Okay, common problems we see with golfers, the, golf, the, the divot pattern's coming too soon, and then the golf ball. So your divot pattern's there, really quite good. However, what we've actually seen uh, with those, the first one was a little bit short of, uh, of, of in distance, wasn't it? Yeah. So now we're, going, we're just going to, uh, if cameraman would like just to turn, just go back to his original position, what we're going to do now with, uh, with Will is we're, going to, we're just going to put the, uh, the plate down just behind, uh, just behind the golf ball to see, again, just as an example, to see what we would use to try and improve uh, our players' contacts. And I'm absolutely convinced, Will, you're going you're gonna to avoid making contact yeah. with this plate. 
So the fat plate is a great e a train aid which we use with lots of our clients. So I'm going to test you a little bit here by just putting the golf ball towards the back of the plate. Now the strike strip there is going to let us know immediately if you've bottomed out too soon. Okay, so that was, uh, that was a tester there, wasn't it? Yeah. That was a tester. So you actually, you avoided making contact with the plate on the, on the downswing. You caught it on the backswing, didn't yeah. you? Okay, so we, go, we should go one more. I'm going to give you a little bit, a little bit more breathing space on this one here. Now for you watching at home, if you haven't got access to an actual plate here, get a bag towel or something down just behind there, which can really help with the strike. So that one there, you just caught the the plate there didn't you yeah just so i know for a fact uh i set will uh his practice time his challenges i know that you've hit lots of shots in the past yeah. with the actual uh, with the actual fat plate here so uh, we can see there you just bottomed out a little bit too early yeah. so this time of year the way we're delivering that golf club we've got to get that golf club striking down on the golf ball but not too much on the striking down on the golf ball okay so what I'd like to do now, just go through a little uh, little drill. Uh, now I'm going to ask our cameraman if he can move round again, just uh, just for this exercise here. So, well, if I can get you to set up to the uh, to this golf ball here, great. And I'm just going to take one of Will's uh, one of Will's golf clubs. I'm just going to mark out approximately a grips length here just behind the line of the golf ball. I'm just going to pop a little row of golf balls here. So now I'm just going to ask Will to hit a couple of shots away now without hitting these golf balls. This is really trying to, it's a great exercise to get that bottom leading edge bottoming out. So get those divot patterns there ahead of the golf ball. Yeah. We're going to go one more and then we're going to just change it around a little bit which I think may upset Will a fraction. <laughs> So just if you can just explain to me there, Will, so when setting up to this golf shot here, to avoid hitting these back balls, your body weight is towards the, towards yeah, the left side. Yeah, towards the left-hand side a little bit more than it is, obviously, than, than centre, really. But I can't stand be a smidge forward. Okay. Just if you can just, uh, left side. if we can just hold you there just for a second as well. It's really important here as we, as we look at uh, when Will setting up to the golf ball here, this, the golf ball's absolutely in line with the sternum here for this golf shot. Well, if you make a backswing for me, so as you can see, when Will's made that backswing, again the golf, uh, the uh, the golf ball's in line with the the chin, uh, the body weight staying on that lead inside, that left side. Now, if you just simulate impact now, so come back to impact, great. So the body weight's really stayed on that left side. Okay, give it a go now on the golf ball. Oh, okay. So that I believe is your bad shot, Will. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Will's bad one with his pitching, sometimes he comes down too much on the ball. And that's exactly what that exercise would do there. So if you're struggling with, the, with catching the golf ball heavy or hitting your pitches a little bit on the high side, that's a great little drill. Popping yeah. the balls. We said they're a grip length behind. You can make it as easy or as hard as you like with that. Now, we're, gonna just, we're just going to change it up a little bit. Yeah. So if you can address the golf ball for me, yeah. Will. And what we're going to do here this time of year everyone's talking about the bounce now, this little exercise here we've got some, I'm just going to take the actual object ball away now for a second so actual fact I'll give you a little bit of breathing space to begin with so we're going to get Will just to hit a few pitches or make a few pitch swings here to avoid making contact with those forward balls how are we going to do that oh okay let's go again let's go again great excellent so we can clearly see Will's divots there ahead of the golf ball. That's brilliant. But sometimes you struggle with that slightly skinny pitch shot. Yeah. Okay, so in your efforts there, you can see you if you just lift the wedge up a fraction there, you've bottomed out a little early, yeah. but the divot's shallower, isn't it? Yeah. Now you can on a Sunday morning on a soggy golf course, you can get away with yeah. that if we by using that the sole of the golf club and the correct club choice. Can we give it a go on the golf ball from there? So now we like to see a much higher pitch shot. Beautiful, beautiful. 
So you just flick that, just that forward ball there. Yeah. I'll let you off with that though, Will. That was, uh, that was a pretty good effort. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. So we've really got that. You know, the sound was much yeah. better there, wasn't it? You know, we really got the, the sound. Then we, we can, the divot shallower. Yeah. The golf club, okay, it's bottomed out a little bit early. But you've got out of jail there. You've used the sole of the golf club and the bounce. But that's, that's, that's what it's there for, okay? Yeah. So what we'd like to do now, Will, now we've gone through the, the balls behind. That educates on the, using the bottom leading edge, striking down on the ball. The balls in front helps us get a better understanding of the bounce. We're going to go, no, no thrills, no gimmicks here. You're going to hit some wedge shots away now. Cameraman, if you could just move back to the original position. And we're going to see exactly how these are flying. We're going to see yellow disc. Yeah, yeah we can go yellow disc or we can mix it up. You can go yellow disc. Good, yeah. behind here are praying that you're going to hit a funny one. Yeah, that, was, uh, that was a lovely strike. <coughs> so you be yourself here, I'm guessing you're just visualising those balls slightly ahead so we're not striking down too much onto the uh, onto the golf ball. What I love about your technique, Will, I know we, st we spent a lot of time on this and your preparation, should I say, is the way that you rehearse for the shot, really yeah. trying to find that swing before we make it. Yeah. yeah. So with, uh, with that in mind, I mean, there's some simple exercises there which can really help your pitching this time of year. Yeah. Now, one of the, uh, one of the common ones uh, which, which, which I find, again, if someone was to uh, say, Rob, give me one tip on how I can stop duffing my wedges, what I'd actually say, just open the club face a fraction. We spoke about club selection. By opening the club face just a fraction there helps increase the bounce. It's when we see the golf club closing, that's when that bottom leading edge digs in, isn't it? So if, um, if you were playing Lynx golf in the middle of the summer, when it, you know, it's absolutely imperative that we get to the bottom of the ball, closing the club face a fraction there and playing that low runner is going to really help with the contact, not so much this time of year. Also, uh, on the opposite, you know, we're, gonna, we're going to cover a bunker theme in the, next, in the upcoming weeks. Lots of players now, lots of golf courses, the bunkers are very hard and compact. So if you were playing hard and compact bunkers, you wouldn't have the club face too far open, would you? No, no, you'd, you'd probably want to keep it neutral, maybe even to close. Okay, yeah, again, to help to make sure yeah. that we, we're striking down onto the, onto the golf course. Before we just move on to uh, a few questions, we just um, alluded to it a, 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 t a second ago there about Will's distance control. If, Will, if you could just take your setup position yeah. here, now, with your that your 54 degree wedge, yep. how far do you hit that? Uh, 85. 85 yards. Yep. So with the and so that's with a full swing. So if yep. you show me the length of your full swing, great. Okay, on the way through as well. So the full committed golf swing is going to pretty much go 85 yards. So the shot that we played there was 40 yards, yep. wasn't it? So how, in your mind, if you can tell me, if you can tell the audience as well, how do you work on your 40 yard distance? So what do you tell yourself? Distance, so a lot of it would be, is obviously like you said before, I want to find the swing first, I want to find the speed and the length of the swing before I actually step onto the golf ball and know, know how hard it is before I actually commit to that. Okay, so you're going to find the how far, how yeah. far back, you're going to find the how far through, yeah. and then you're going to marry that up with rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, so you find your how far, how fast. Okay, yeah. if you can show us that there, so. This is the time when we play in the short game shots, guys, especially the, uh, the pitching shots, where we really need to try and rehearse. We've got to find that speed, so we're trying to rehearse at match speed. That's lovely. Yeah, great there. So when you then set up to the golf ball, I'd yep. love to get sent to a golf ball to hit one there, but there's yeah. a nice little Ferrari parked beside this, uh, this fence here. Um, you wouldn't dwell then too long over the golf ball. No. Okay, no, so. Brilliant. You've, so you've found your length, you've found your speed over the golf ball, perhaps one look at the hole, give it a go. Yeah. Yeah, give yeah, it yeah. a go. Okay, excellent. 
Right then. So um, I believe we've got some um, a number of questions, guys. So. Uh, yeah, we've uh, had a tweet through um, from a guy called Dave, and um, we want to know what sort of shot should he be playing this time of year? Is it a chip and run or a pitch? What would your sort of recommendation be? I think my recommendation there would be based on uh, if we're if we're delivering the golf club in a, in a decent manner, like Will is there. This time of year, we can really we can make that we can take a great advantage of the golf courses are soft, the ball isn't rolling, so it's like throwing a dart on the green. So if we're confident. Get the wedge on it, chuck it up there towards the flag. Um, again, it depends on the uh, the situation. So, again, my advice to uh, to Will would be to you know, to play the simple shot, you know, to try and keep it simple. But if we are playing that chip and run, it's a bit of a lottery how that golf ball is going to react on the on the green. So, if you're delivering the golf club well, so perhaps trying a few of the drills which we've gone through today, speak to your PGA pro, um, see if they can help you with it. Go chuck it at the flag. If not. Let's, uh, let's let us play for the release one. Would you agree with that, Will? Yeah, definitely. Because when you, when you find the chipping ring, the house is going to react onto it, but it's going to land softly, hardly, you know, it's going to check or roll. Yep. And you don't know, it's just going to react on, on a long of your green. So, just throwing it at the pin, you've just got much more control over how it's going to react with that. Okay, good advice. So, as a general rule of thumb, summertime, I'd probably say land, get it on the green within one or two paces of the, of the fringe, then get it releasing towards the hole. This time of year, we maybe want to get it on the green that you know that midpoint between yeah. uh, fringe and, uh, and hole but whatever whatever works for you and ask yourself that question are you are you confident that, that would be my advice there okay bro uh we've also had one from facebook uh zane would like to know what am i doing wrong if the ball is going left to right i normally tend to hit it straight but on sunday every club every club was going to the right every club was going to the right so the golf ball flight going left to right okay so golf ball flight will if you take a setup position there for me. So we need to uh, get an understanding here and what we've spoken about a lot here, divot patterns. Where's that divot pointing? So Zane, if you've hit a shot uh, with an iron for example, or even with a fairway wood, and you took a little bit of a divot, step back, have a look to see where, you're at, where your divot was pointing, Zane. The chances are when the golf ball's going left to right, it's when the golfer is actually swinging the golf club in that direction so again if you take your setup position so when the golf club is delivering this way uh, we are brilliant at keeping the club face to target so what's actually happening here the golf ball then develops spin the straighter the face club that you're using and the faster that club heads traveling the more the more that ball's going to spin that's where those fades are going to be coming from there so my simple advice to well do you want to take this one well change that swing direction you're a good yeah, yeah. Uh, so a lot of the days, just like, like you said, there's the swing direction, travelling left. So a lot of days, you just got to feel as though you're getting the club more inside connected to the body. Yeah, Sending great. more out towards the target there. Yeah. Yeah. What I would say to change the swing direction there. Stay connected, swing it out. Just please though, if that is the case, Zane, check your fundamentals. How's the, uh, how's the grip looking? Um, you know, where are you aiming? Those are the two basic fundamentals which you need to check before we start getting funky with any swing changes. Yeah. Yeah? Anything else there, guys? No? No. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's Facebook Live. Will, congratulations on making your debut today. I thought yep, you did uh, you impeccably well. Yes, so, uh, yeah, be sure to, uh, we've had some great feedback so far. Uh, be sure to, uh, to drop us a comment down below. Um, email us, Facebook, tweet. Let us know what you would like us to cover. We're all over it. Give us, the, give us a like. Um, and we'll be back next week giving you some more great content. Share as much as we possibly can. Christmas is on the way. We've got some great online uh, giveaways, haven't we? We've got some great giveaways. We've got a great online shop, which uh, we get in. Uh, we, we've got a lot of customers now buying for their loved ones. Uh, be sure to look out for 12 days of Christmas as well. We've got a few nice little giveaways there. And uh, enjoy your golf. Uh, wrap up this weekend. It's going to be a little bit cool. And uh, yeah, see you soon.